Uh, the most that you start fucking uh, blah, blah. you start realizing that most of the, the, the things you do anywhere is, uh, are probably very weird and you're like oh I'm this actually I feel better now that I'm feeling it that I'm, I'm fully going into it than when I, the times when I am just trying to not be that way and then everyone else is like oh that guy's really weird no you just need to accept <laughs> it you yeah, exactly. Yeah. It. And like hit it like full force, like a belly flop into the grass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, uh, you're not. I mean, it's yeah. softish grass. Yeah. I mean, I've just been easing myself into it like this, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I'm still like gonna flop. Like, I'm gonna be flopped in it. Oh, oh, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> All right, so, well, this is the thing, Phil. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <sighs> People always talk about four leaf clovers, right? Yeah. Talking yeah, about yeah. some special mm -hmm. thing, right? Yeah, they're very special. You ever, you ever see a uh, 13th, 13th, a 13th, thir 13 stem dandelion? I've never seen a 13 stem yes, dandelion. That's the ones people aren't looking out for. Yeah. Uh -huh. People aren't looking out for the 13 stem dandelion. Everyone likes the four-leaf clover, the, mm -hmm. the, the three, three. Do you uh, think that's because they're toes. told to look for that though? No one's being told to look for the thirteenth stand because, dandelion. Because we're, we've been lied to. Mm. It's actually, it's all around us. It's actually most, most, most dandelions have like something like thirteen or so mm -hmm. leaves on them, and it's all around us all the time. And have to be, it doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be so, you know found. It's just right. It's just the dang. It's right there. They're right there. You just you just grab them. Mm -hmm. But we're not even we're not even aware we're supposed to be looking for them, and they're right in front of us. And that's kind of like, and that's kind of like, um, you know, that's kind of like cooking food. You know, you're like you're looking for these flavors, and it's like, dude, your taste buds are in your mouth. You know, like, why are you looking outside of yourself for what you already have? You know, or or what you already got in. You, you're the prize, man. You have she, the taste in you yeah, all this she, time. The taste has been in you this whole time. Yeah, the taste has been in you. She, just because she doesn't know, you know, like, like she'll chase you, you know? Mm, mm -hmm. Like, let her, ch she'll chase you, right? Because the taste has been in you. Yeah, because the taste is in you. She's she to wants get to get the taste. Yeah, and, and um, you know, don't let... Don't let that put a bad taste in your mouth if she's feeling that way. But has the bad taste always been there because you are the taste? Um, Do you have to just learn how to like the bad taste in your mouth? Oh. Well, I mean, if you brush your teeth, you can kind of get it away for, for a little while. So what is brushing your teeth? Brushing your teeth is kind of like a thing where you put a... If you use, like, baking soda, it's very effective. People don't realize that you can just use baking soda and stuff, all that sort of stuff. It's um, true. I how, how much cheaper do you think that is? How much money would you save oh, it's a, a lot year? Cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like three dollars each time, each time you like how how much sense are you saving each time you brush your, your it's teeth? It's about about twenty dollars for like a huge thing of baking soda. Yeah. You probably get. I'm gonna save five thousand brushes out of that. Yeah. Like genuinely. Mm -hmm. Probably get a. On the, on the order of hundreds of brushes on a, a regular well, Years place. wise, like two years, three years, five years. Well, it depends how often you brush your teeth, dude. If I brush it twice, like a normal, tw twice a day. Normal. I mean, well, how, okay, how, <laughs> how, 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 how many do you brush? Yeah, how many? Dude, I brush, I brush all of them. <laughs> oh, you brush all the teeth? Yeah, I mean, I only I don't, brush I don't the front like, like two or three. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you like you brush, you brush two or three a day. Like, yeah, so I brush like, I brush like probably br however many 23, 23 teeth a day. Probably. Yeah, it's weird how you don't, how we don't know how many teeth are in our mouth. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like fifty something. No, there's no fucking there's way. No way. <laughs> there's no way it's fifty. There's no what, way. Is our teeth in America? <laughs> That'd be America. wild. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> I mean, you're right. I don't know. You're right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't it's gotta be more like eleven. I'm, I, I know an odd number sounds wrong, but like, I just I. Well, that's really... the thing. Everybody has different amounts of teeth. Cause I'm yeah. missing four of my like grow my perma permanent teeth aren't oh. in my mouth. 
You got rid of them. I got rid of them. I chose to get rid of them. Yeah, that was a choice. It wasn't a choice, actually. It wasn't a choice. They're, I yeah. kind of wanted to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, but also, don't hold on to the past. You know? uh, but that's the thing, because my really mouth wasn't big enough. Yeah. They had to get rid of some teeth, I guess. They had to get rid of those teeth. Yeah. I, I got to keep my wisdom teeth, though. Oh, you did keep the wisdom I teeth? I got my wisdom okay. teeth, yeah. So, is wisdom teeth, is that like, um, okay. Is that kind of like a quinceanera? Mm, mm, yeah. I, in a way, when you get your wisdom teeth, it yeah, should be. It's a lot like a quinceanera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, with Except your you family go... dancing, and there's merengue, and it was like... <laughs> so, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't quite like that, you know? but th we did get, we got a dancing clown, you know? Oh, okay. A little dancing clown, and uh, some marionettes. Very yeah, theatrical, yeah, you remember, know? It's more of like the... a coming-of-age story that they like to reenact in play form okay. with puppets and a dancing clown. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's called uh, the Ode to Manhood and the Wisdom Teeth Bring. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is there... Are you guys thinking of doing a sequel? Or, or, or... I mean, I feel like the, like the sequel would have to be in, like, when we go to the space age. Once yeah, yeah. that happens, a sequel would have to be made. But until then, I feel like we're pretty satisfied in the community. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... I mean, if we really get into it, you know, it's like... It, you're gonna need you're gonna you're gonna need dentists in space, you know. Definitely. It's like one of those things that they're not really paying attention mm -hmm. to. Really. If you were to do like a dentist job or a nurse or like construction worker, what what would you do? Um, Carpenter, like grocery grocery shop. Job. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh huh. Oh. And you had to do it for like a year. Like like w w w I'm not. I'm, What's the what's the, 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 the securing line between all these jobs? Like what what is like the main like the day the day work? It's like the nine to, a five, nine to five, a nine to five of some sort. A nine to five. Uh, mm -hmm. nine to five. Yeah, and I've, it could be for the benefit of the community, like firefighter or something like uh, that. You know. Does that really help the community? I mean, you're fighting fires. Yeah, that's true. I don't like fire. I mean, I like fire. I don't want to get hurt by fire. The you know? community doesn't fuck with fire. The like community that. doesn't yeah. fuck with fire. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. yeah. About it. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, probably like a, ooh, oh, well, there are zookeepers, you know, like, like there are, that's a yeah. thing, but, but like, if I become a zookeeper, does that mean I'm part, I'm becoming part of the problem? I mean, or, or you're helping, you're, you're yeah. helping the animals give them as much as they can. So it's like a Gramscian Marxist uh, yeah, approach to Yeah, I mean, zookeeping. you do what you can, Like I you go know. in there and I infiltrate mm -hmm. this circle of oppression and then I deliver and I like instill a new culture from within. Exactly. Yeah. So like the exactly. Italian philosopher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe, all right, I mean, I don't know, I, I'd either do that or... Um, My uncle was a zookeeper. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He got bit by a, a chimpanzee once or a monkey, something like that. Yeah. Something crazy. Oh, yeah, no. And by a seal. Those things are crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A seal? A seal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. It was in Canada. David Goggins is like, fuck you, bitch! Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, mm -hmm. like, He's wild. Uh, that's crazy. I, um, I think I'd probably be like a... Goodbye, Jeremy. I'd, I... What is Jer... What is Jer... Just Jeremy, like a doctor? Jeremy's not a doctor. Jeremy is a blessed soul. Much like you. Oh, okay. Yeah, just kind of, just out there. Yeah, yeah. Out there in the wilderness, oh. trying to figure out what, what life's all about and what yeah. he should do with his guitar. Yeah. Well, he is, he, I think he figured it out because it's hanging from his back right now. It is, I mean, it's kind of where it should be at the moment. Kinda what, it's kind of, yeah, he's kind of got it, got it figured out, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, he's, he's still, he's still, you know, he's figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. We got so much time, dude. Yeah. We got, like, thousands of years. Yeah, dude. Th we, thousands of Thousands of years. of years, dude. Oh, easily, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thousands of years of guitars, probably. Probably. Yeah, it's not like, yeah, that, that, that's probably what it is. They're going to probably stop inventing new instruments soon because they're like why why would we well we have computers now yeah. so it's like that's just one big instrument in a that's way yeah. depending it's not as fun no it's not as it's fun it's a different type of fun but yeah you also don't have to do much work exactly and well i guess that makes it not fun 
It depends. Like, I like, as a video editor, I like the idea of using samples to make music because yeah. I understand it. Uh -huh. So that's fun for me because I don't have to play an instrument. I'm like, oh, no, nah, I know how to fucking cut and put things together that sound good like that. Um, it's just the alpha. Yeah, but, but like, I don't have the skill level to, like, tweak those samples. You and that's know? why it's, that's, yeah. it's the alpha. It's, it's the alpha, what I mean is in the alpha and the loss function, right? The loss function is the main thing in machine learning. It's basically, machine learning is like you're optimizing on a space. You're op if you're optimizing on a three-dimensional field, like trying to find the lowest point of a three-dimensional field, you would, the best way to do it if you're a robot would be to, I'm gonna throw this ball and whatever its position is vertically, I'm gonna mark that and then compare it to the past ones. And um, basically, once it converges on a smaller and smaller locality, given the x, y, I'm gonna say, oh, this is the, the, the low point, the, the, the optimized point of the loss function. And that tells you which, where to put um, the constants in the rest of the equation to be able to be, have most predictive success. And so, basically, if your alpha is really big, you know, you, you drop a ball here, then drop one over there, and then like, imagine you drop one on this, on this, on that, on that hilltop by the barn, and then, and then mm -hmm. on this little ridge right here, and then it landed right there, and mm -hmm. then it went back up towards the other barn, and then it landed back here again. Be, oh, this is the lowest point, but actually the lowest point's here. So you need a smaller alpha, maybe five, ten feet. But if it's too small, it'll take forever. And so, when you're sampling, it's kind of a similar thing. It's like music is a is a is is genetic like that it's it's a self-organizing thing within humans are are, are the fulfilling cycle on that system of I, I heard something and now i'm going to put something and now i i i, I put all, so all this information now i'm generating something and it's like if it's just like oh i'm taking a sample and now i'm going to just mutate that sample it's like the alpha is larger so you it, so so if, if you're if you're if you're if the act of music is like making a song or a tune or a beat or whatever is like trying to optimize to express your feeling in that moment it might it, it like if you can't if you're not able to mutate the actual maybe it's the, this one little rhythm thing in the sample this little pitch or something like to your the highest degree it might not be the actual fullest instant you know instantaneous expression but no i agree because like see, i'm the same that, way when it's yeah. like because as an illustrator like yeah. drawing and shit it's like okay I could collage, I could cut things out of a magazine, but then my alpha is big, like you're saying. But since I can literally draw anything by looking at it, oh, I can get in there and I can make even the trees of this scene. Like if I'm drawing us, mm -hmm. even the trees in the background, I can instill the emotion of whatever it is yeah. I'm trying to convey in that image. But if I'm using collage, I can't get in there and fine tune those images the way I can just by drawing them. Yeah. yeah, and like being an actual musician, you can like get in there and just like, nah, I'm gonna fucking fine tune these little yeah. things to, to so that it does exactly what I want it to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the, I think that, but but on that case of the ca the case of sampling or maybe mm. collaging, when there's a large alpha, there's an interesting thing that happens is there's actually two optimization things happening. While if you if you're like, oh, there was this this, this story of this girl and then she went to. Her name was Beth, and she went to the, the, the fields, and then there was a dolphin flying in the fields, and then she met this man, and he, and the dolphins turned mean, and then he decided he was going to save her from the dolphins, and then, but then they, they, they fell in love, and they realized they had to move away, because she was only there for the summer vacation, and, uh, but you know what, they, he sent one last letter to her, and said, you know, maybe one day we'll see the dolphins again. You know, some story, beautiful story like this, um, <laughs> so, so this mm -hmm. is a, that's a, but right, so that, that, that that's like, uh, a moment, right? Like that, but that's, it's, it's a large moment. But like, so while you're trying to tell that story with music and l l words and all that stuff, it's like that seems like a fine point. Um, uh, but as you're writing it itself, like imagine if you try to tell that story with samples, you might now, there's, a, there's an active feedback loop happening just between the person and the sample. The sample's now affecting my mood. I'm kind of taken away from that. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, but in some sense, it's like, so it's like, in some sense that happens too when you're, uh, when you're doing it from a completely small alpha, very crit critical co compositional um, standpoint as, as an illustrator making, mm -hmm. drawing something or a musician composing something. It's like, 
that feedback loop is so tight because you're deciding every moment uh -huh. and you're still reacting but you're reacting so in the moment uh -huh. and then you're also paying attention to that larger story you're trying to tell yeah I, that, that might have gotten no, a little bit off track no but, definitely because yeah. it is like when you are just creating a loan in your own box your feedback back loop is much smaller because you're trying to not to use other resources or look at other things or examples yeah. or references you're just like no nah, i'm gonna i'm gonna stay in my own head and using the grooves in your head that have been laid exactly by and that's what i would say is like when you're younger you don't have as much stuff in your head mm -hmm. so like you don't have a lot of things to bounce off of but now when i'm drawing it like, I just did four pages for a comic anthology that just got launched. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not going to look at any references for this. Like, I don't want to da 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 The only things I looked at references for were the skateboard flips for, like, for some of the characters. I was doing, like, specific tricks. Mm -hmm. But I just drew and let the drawings inform what came next. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, I feel like as a musician you let your feedback back loop just inform you like it's a never-ending thing like it's instead of it just being bounced in a cage you're like oh no you do this for a while and then it starts going down a line and like oh and then we do this yeah. and then we do this and then we do that yeah. but like we know to follow our gut now yeah. which is super cool it's been it's been de it's been defined i yeah i call i call that the butterfly process or the butterfly okay. catching skill that i think it's it's a it's close to like a Buddhist creationist concept concept of you're always creating your own reality. You're always creating everything. I mean, maybe Jesus talked about this sort of stuff, the, the will in Christianity or something like that, but like the butterfly process, it's a little bit like this, but it's just like, you know, if you imagine the best things that ever happened to you, um, there's these moments, these like fleeting moments that you can like capture almost like a butterfly when it comes by. And people say it sometimes, you know, a butterfly is like your dead loved ones or something like that. And it's like, that's like, a, that's like your dead, that's like you're an angel like talking to you, you know? And it's like, it, 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 for musicians and artists and people that, are, that operate in the, in the realm of vision, if what could, if like, oh, I can make that this and, you know, I can create this thing, you know, and entrepreneurs and artists and, and, and what, uh, yeah, artists, everything, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. be, humans like creating their life. Um, it's like that skill, I call it the butterfly catching process because like you, you can see the butterflies and you develop your vision to see the butterflies to all, and it, with music and all these things, you can show them that moment you can you know if you're like a, a family man you have some kids you like discipline them they're like no like, i'm like i'm a training like i'm i'm putting i'm planting a butterfly bush here so that they're like when they're 15 they, they're like confident and they can have that moment in school and then something happens and they get they get to experience a butterfly fly into the like a, a spiritual mm -hmm. vision or you know and it's like this moment you can create for people or maybe you can create for yourself and uh but yeah, I call it butterfly catching. It's like you have to be aware of the butterflies, develop the vision, and then it's also like, okay, now how do how do I either attract them, or when a butterfly comes by, I'm ready to catch it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like there's a, I, I see butterflies almost every day, literally, mm -hmm. I, I, or, or in in the real and <laughs> in the real <laughs> in the real world. <laughs> but uh, and uh, it's like, yeah, I don't have a net. You know, if you don't have a net, it's like you might catch it with your hand. Mm -hmm. Or if you're very still, there's a bush around, maybe it'll land in your hand. Then that, that can happen probably in music too, in art and all these different things, and a family or life, or whatever. But it's like, if you have a net, mm -hmm. you're probably pretty good when you see one. And if you have, and if you live, you plant yourself somewhere and build a bunch of butterfly bushes around you. You're good. You, you don't even need a net. And it, but if but you have yeah. a net too, mm -hmm. now you're yeah. like, yeah, well, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Yeah. You, there's, a, there's like a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, sliding yeah. scale. There, sliding you know? scale, exactly. You could, live, you could literally build butterfly bushes mm -hmm. all over your property and just have yeah. them always with mm -hmm. you. Or you could. Or you're chasing the butterflies. Like you yeah. migrate with them. Which it's is, like, and, and yeah. both people get to see butterflies. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like tons of different ways yeah. to go catching butterflies. But, but that's, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like you, you get to, but the, these, 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 like, in the realm of vision, it's like there's like these metaphysical butterflies that you can see. Like, it, it just like, you know. I mean, in my life, seriously, it's like, I, I tell a lot of kids when I teach kids and stuff, like, around music, I'm like, so think about the best moment you ever happened happen in your life. Feel it in your body. That's a positive 10. Now, imagine the worst thing that happened in your body. Feel it ever happened in your life. Feel it in your body. That's a negative 10. Zero is neutral. And so, like, 
what are like positive tens that you want to have in your life in music because it's you can't you don't want to tell them it's but but you know mm, give us specifics yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But, let's, let's keep it out down a path yeah yeah, yeah right and it's like because I'm just trying to help them how to do this in general. If they want to start applying that to something else, to basketball or to, to mm-hmm. engineering or whatever, I don't yeah. know. But um, it's like, what would those moments be that you could see in the future? Imagine, now Now tell me, the, what is, what's the paint on the wall? What does it smell like? Who's there? What time is it at night? Descri- like feel that, imagine that moment even more and more and more and more and get there. And if, it's, if you will feel positive 10, and it's just like, how does that now we have to either build a bush we have to plant a bush and tend to it or we have to weave a net you know um and we have to do one of those things and i think a lot of times for me it, it boils down to most of those answers usually boil down to i want to be able to play songs whenever someone asks me or at my family party i want to be able to play songs or i'd love to be able to play with any musician which is kind of interesting there's these three categories but the, the one i love mm-hmm. the most is like the family party or something like that because it's like that is where music in humanity kind of evolved I really think it's like sitting by the fire after you to hunt with your whole family your whole tribe just chased after five deer for the past three days now we're eating and the one dude or one woman in Western Africa with a banjo is singing the songs that everyone knows that only that tribe probably knows or a few tribes surrounding fam- you know familiar to that and uh, and just everyone knows the songs and everyone loves every one of them and it's good and then you know the kid that wants to be that person that bard sits next to them every every hunt and eventually they're that person 20 years later 10 years later and it's like we live in this fractionalized world where we don't have that to some degree we have streaming platforms all that stuff but it's like okay but um it's like everyone still has their own little hunting unit that they're probably in and so i asked them like what's your family's favorite song what's your favorite song Mm -hmm. younger what's your mom dad's favorite song what's your like what are you what songs do you like by them like that they like and let's create a book of that and then it's because it's like if if you were at this family gathering and your your dad, your mom, your brother, your sister, your grandma, whoever is in your life, your best friend, your orphan, your you know, your whoever took care of you, whatever it is, you could play that song in that moment for them. That's you're gonna catch that but you're gonna put that in their physical you're gonna put the butterflies in their stomach. They're gonna cry. Mm-hmm. They're gonna feel God for once, <clears throat> maybe in their life, you know? And no. maybe they'll feel it other ways, but uh, it's like that is real, and it, I've seen it happen, and I've done it. I, I don't, I'm gonna share briefly why I know it's real. It's like my best friend, one of my best friends I grew up with, I used to go to church with and stuff, he passed away, and then I started playing keyboard right after that. I was like 19 or 20 or so, and I literally, I learned a hymn for his funeral, and I played at the funeral on the piano. It was the first thing I learned on piano. And uh, I told his dad, I'm like, you know, I'm going to, like, make my life good for you. I'm going to, like, whatever. And he just was like, yeah. And he was like, so, say, say something about music, like music, like, you know, like, do it with something with music. And, but I, I was like, I'm going to play piano the next five years every single day. And I didn't even think of this kind of idea yet. But I'm, I'm gonna play, that, that was me weaving a net or planting a bush, you know. Planting a bush to me is like buying a piano. It's like, mm-hmm. well, now you can play. You know? Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, you were chasing butterf- butterflies. Yeah, yeah, you were out there and with I'm a like, net. And mm-hmm. exactly... So I do that, I work my ass off to do that. I had some ups and downs, like I had to work, I was doing this, but I basically practiced every day. The first year I played like 10 hours a day. And then on the day, the fucking anniversary of that fucking, like my friend's death and his funeral, five years exactly after that happened, I'm playing at the Stone Pony, opening for Southside Johnny. He's like a Jersey legend or whatever. I'm playing with my friend Jared. I look down, and it's Mr. Calarero, and he's sitting there, and I'm like, I look at him, I'm like, and he's like, <gasps> and I'm like, and he just like, we both just had tears in our eyes, yeah. And it was just like, and I was like that, you know, like I, I, maybe that wasn't the one I, I, I envisioned, but it was, you know, it, it's like, it, 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 ha- it, it happened. It was mm-hmm. like I, 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 that's gonna be, that's gonna, I'm gonna. I want to make my family members, people that died, people, these people feel healing and love and all this stuff. And, uh, yeah, it connects. It, it connects. Yeah, magic. Sometimes like, to music the exact has that power. Day. For yeah. sure, dude. It, uh, yeah. Like, that's a beautiful story. Like, fuck. 
because they're like you stuck to your word you know and like you're like nah i'm gonna fucking do this and you got to that point and the synchronicities aligned god whatever the universe put the dad in that seat and was like yo look look it happened look at this you guys talked about this five years ago and look and look was, at this yeah it's like and it, it just it's yeah and it's it's crazy you know that that's really romantic and beautiful and not to brush over the romance mm -hmm. romance and beautiful but it, it opens this other idea of there's a difference between how clear your but your vision of butter the butterflies that you see that could be possible are you know like is it very specific is it like um is it something like playing at this specific venue to this person or like playing on the beach to like my wife like this specific song that we both love or is it like I want to, in, in a few years, be able to, when someone asks me to play a song, I can just hop it, you know? Yeah. Or something like, like it, it can be, it can be d different levels of vagueness, you know? Because it's, it, you know, it, it can, and like, I just was like, I just want to be a great musician that, that, you know, like when people die, you need music and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, it's like, but and like, it's like, also you can hop in whenever you can play yeah. anything. And that's, like, I definitely like to differentiate I just put it in terms, I uh, heard it once on a podcast, basically, but the difference between dreams and goals. That goals, mm. in the context of butterflies, are butterflies that you can chase on your own. But dreams are either bushes or butterflies that you have to catch with other people. Like, it's a team effort. That's what a dream is. Like, okay. it takes other people. Yeah. Um, but a goal, like you're saying, like, I'm going to become a good musician. Like, and those are good butterflies to chase early on because it's like, you're building yourself up so that you can be a part of a team yeah. to chase like a the dream. god of yeah. butterflies, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. the fuck that is, the, the you know? The actual behemoth. Yeah, yeah the yeah, behemoth yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking butterfly, yeah, this yeah, yeah. giant ass like monster hunter tier like butterfly yeah. that everybody has to go in on. Yeah. yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's blowing, it's using its wings to blow wind at us right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. I. I've been writing about this for a while. Ever since I, I had a hand injury and I started uh, started teaching, because so I was like I was touring with a hand. I couldn't play with my right hand, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. I, was t I was taking solos with my left hand. I was like becoming oh, yeah. like this. I don't know, which is great, but like my hand was messed up. I couldn't. You were working things. too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was just like, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just teach. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna dial it back. And you know what? Every day before I teach, I'm like, I'm like, like, I'm like, God, like. Please, like, um, let me help me take this opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity to be humble and patient, to learn humility, learn patience. Because like sometimes they're gonna be the teacher to me, and sometimes I'm gonna be the, the teacher. Sometimes they're the student, I'm the student. You know, they're like the prophet. They they prophesy. Sometimes I'm prophesying. Like sometimes they can show me something. I'm like, well, I didn't even think of it. Man, I like that way or something. But uh, and I was like, I'm gonna like do this though, to learn those things, and to like specifically make like a body of work or ideas to essentially make a business out of but like a, a service up it's a service to people to like figure out how to do this education thing i don't know just to figure it out you know like to like to make, make some artifact of this and like maybe help add to the human so where are you teaching just at a private school in in, mm -hmm. in jersey and just like down the street from where i live right now and uh but i started writing this stuff like i started every day after the thing i just started writing more and more i like some days I'd write like just about like your what you've been teaching the and stuff, butterfly or process, like the butterfly process, all this different yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. and I, I I ask every student I do an interview with every student I once a year I do it, or if I have a new student I do it, and I, I do some like a music theory, like not music theory, um, just like see like how I have a scale for like where they at in their ear and all that stuff. Like one, one is this note higher or lower? What does this sound like to you? All that stuff, and I get data from that, and then I ask them like those. What, like, I describe the story, this like romantic story of the butterflies that they can mm -hmm. like catch, you know. Like what and are those? Yeah. What are those mm -hmm. for you? Yeah. And it's so interesting that so many people. I there's very few people. There's like once in a while I'll get a kid that's just like, I want to just like, be the best in the world or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. Ash Ketchum style. And I'm like, mm -hmm. whoa. And I'm like, I remember that's kind of. I used to tell people that 
the first mm-hmm. year, I was like, they're like, what, what are you doing this for? I'm like, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the fucking best. I'm going to be the fucking best. Mm-hmm. I, it really, really is like, yeah. dude, I'm really sad and my friend died and then all these family members died. And like, it just makes me, I, I want to like be the person that brings the love in those moments or whatever. But being the best is probably the best also at that. in there yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, also yeah. in there, you know? Best mm-hmm. at that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, usually it's like, it's so, won- it's kind of wonderful. It's like so many people your answer is like I just want to be able to play the, all the Christmas songs at Christmas like I'd say like nice. a third of people say that exactly that's cool that's pretty I'm cool like, I'm like yeah and you know what mm-hmm. I do every Christmas like my family like, I have a huge ass family that's one of 12 kids 11 kids a bunch of cousins all this stuff and like there's a piano at my, my Aunt Susan's house and like the past few few years that I've been able to play piano like that and they sing a song I've just kind of figured it out I've been playing piano and the whole family is singing I'm like thank you i'm like yo that's the i only best. get a few of these i only get mm-hmm. like that's what i mean it's like yeah i could do that right now but it's not no. christmas right now yeah yeah yeah. and, I'm not, piano. You could, and that's the thing yeah. i'm ba- really bad at remembering lyrics like really yeah. bad so i can't sing most songs i'll like once people are singing them i'm like oh yeah i remember these i can sing along what's other people are singing christmas songs i know and this yo. one year uh, we threw a Christmas party and we invited our two friends, Blake and Robbie, that were musicians and they brought their instruments. And we were like, yeah, just sing Christmas songs, just sing Christmas songs. And we would just belt them and you could just hear us up oh, and yeah. down the neighborhood. And it was yeah. such a good party just for that reason. Like for that reason alone, that like the whole party was singing Christmas songs, like yeah. all of our close friends. It's a beautiful thing. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, one of the, it's one of the rare occasions in this specifically American life where we get to do that there's in cover band concerts you see that shit mm-hmm. someone's people are big fans of the grateful dead or a, 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 a major artist like that that has a big following that everyone knows their songs or a community of them come yeah. together but it's like that's what like it's it used to be every week and and, and that's why i love religious institutions yeah it's like that is why i love week. church i did enjoy yeah. going to church for that reason for that community and yeah. like singing these songs and like checking in with everybody yeah. And like talking about it on a, like a micro cosmic level, my dad, yeah. um, probably when I was about, sometimes probably like 15 or 16, he, every Saturday morning he started making pancakes and either he would put on Neil Young or Talking Heads. That was his thing. Yeah. And that was his thing. And we'd wake up and we'd sing the songs as we're cooking these pancakes and shit. So like we know the, the words of those songs and shit. But like yeah. that was a nice little like family culture that developed. That and we those, all like bonded over. If you mm-hmm. made a butterfly list of songs, like those are probably gonna be in there. Yeah, right? oh yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's like, it's just, yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing. And mm. the weirdest thing about this, this is an idea that I've recently started writing about, which I'm really, I think I, if I ever make this, I make, write a book, well, I, I've just been writing a lot, I don't know, mm-hmm. probably a few different, each, a book really should be written about like one idea and just develop really fully, probably maybe, but, this we live in this new age now all that stuff happens when there is like a constant body of work or, or, or just a, it's a full body of work that everyone that gets disseminated to a bunch of people and then they all like know, learn the same thing and then they can recite together basically like either a prayer or a song or a way of going to the bathroom or what i don't know something like mm-hmm. a custom like that right and you, you see it in language german used to have there used to be like hundreds of dialects of german and now there's one main dialect german heim german was, was from the, the place where martin luther came from because he was the first person to transcribe the Bible into German. So everyone had to learn that form of German, written German, to read the Bible and be you know, that, that whole, you know, they got, uh, uh, they, they made everyone Christian, right? And so that happened a few times, that's happened a few times in the past 2,000 years or so, 3,000 years or whatever. And now, and I think people realize that it happened with the internet, but in the past five to 10 years, especially with short form content like reels and stuff like that and youtube probably to some degree spotify i think we're gonna have a reshuffling in a new sort of it's more but it's literally though a living text now we we engage with everyone engages with instagram or something like that a lot of people do more than with the bible probably Mm -hmm. probably yeah yeah. like i would say everyone that most people mm-hmm. that, that interface with the Bible uh, interface with inter- Instagram and probably half the people that don't interface with the Bible yeah, also, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, so if that song goes viral or, or, or that cover song that, that's been in, the, in the, the, the culture 
it's now not, it's decided by inputs from live cultures here in, in the organic, and but then it gets implanted into this high culture, high tech culture of that song is just we've just proven with algorithms that everyone like They'll almost like it. people yeah. are liking it everywhere. So now it's like this weird reshuffling where the radio did the same thing, but now it's it's like another level of that. But also with all the with language, right? Gen Z language is a thing now, mm -hmm. right? Like people yeah. always talk about Gen Z language and stuff like that. It's like, no, this is yes, but it's internet language now. It's just if you were on the internet engaging with those communities, and even just knowing yeah. uh, certain references yeah. that are just memes, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. People talk like I get a lot of my news through memes that friends are sending me. Yeah. That's how I know about shit that's happening. Fucking weird. It, but yeah. It's, it's like, and, and so that's interesting for music, for my whole like theory of the butterfly theory and stuff like that. It's like, it, I think we're going to see, I'm interested to take more data, honestly. Like, I, I literally would teach or, or ask many teachers to ask their, their, their students this question on like a huge scale and see what happens in the next 20 years and see if there's a convergence or not. Because I'm already seeing. And what would that question be? Like, like what are your well, like what are the butterfly list songs or the Mona Lisa songs of your family or whatever? Mm -hmm, yeah. I'm already seeing students where it's like, well, our family listens to Benson Boone. I'm like, who's Benson? Boone? He's like, that's like what we listen to. Benson is like, please don't the beautiful things. I'm like, wow. Nice. I'm yeah. Like, wow. Like, so that's a TikTok song, right? So like, your mom found that on TikTok. Oh. And yeah, now yeah, it's yeah. like it's like so like. And now it's a part of your home culture. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, like it used to be maybe your mom had a song that her dad listened to. Or yeah. Something, you or know. something. Because Neil Neil Young and Talking Heads. My yeah. dad's Canadian, so Neil Young, and then also he was in New York during the '80s. Yeah. So like Talking Heads, Neil Young, like that whole yeah vibe was like what he grew up with. Like that's what he was going out and listening to. Yeah. So he brought it home. Yeah, and 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 it's interesting because certain songs last through the generations like that like mm -hmm. maybe some like elvis song or something yeah. like that or a psycho hymn. killer yeah like that's not gonna go away that's for any time away. anytime soon like. yeah and it's like so it used to be an organic algorithm was deciding that it was just like families telling each other mm -hmm. because we were fragmented because we no longer are those hunter gatherers that are all singing the same songs in the parties every night so it was like this already this weird more discrete unit of families mm. that are computing which ones we, we they, they like and then now it's like that but they're getting the songs from a huge algorithm yeah. so it's like wow this is you know what is gonna it's just what is what What's is the, the landscape future? gonna be like yeah there's like little little glimpses of hope like you know as well but like even the like DIY punk scene that I love in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Like I know most of my friends' bands that no one knows. I know the lyrics to those songs because I go to yeah. their shows. Yeah. So I sing along, and like <laughs> it's like a, and all my other friends. They also sing along because we've been listening yeah. to them for years, and yeah. it's just a part of our like little culture, which is dope as fuck. It's like Professor Caveman mm -hmm. from New Jersey. Yeah, but dude. Yeah. Great. That's great time. Great yeah. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. Yeah, no, no, yeah.